Hi there, I'm Fred Trost, and I am looking at our new issue of the Outdoor Digest here, well, our March-April issue. We always have a lot of features in there, but one of them is our trophy book, Hunting and Fishing Awards. And when we look at the fishing awards for this period of time, March and April, we see, well, for example, perch, minimum entry 15 inches or 1 pound 12 ounces. Well, we're going to have a little treat tonight. We're not going to look just at the short term at the trophy book. We're going to look at the whole year, the most popular species. For example, perch, 57 perch reported over 1 pound 12 ounces. You know, a lot of them, 12 million perch come from Saginaw Bay, but 24 of these perch came from one lake, an inland lake. You know where it is? You got any good guesses? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to give you the answer to that, plus a lot more tips on fishing. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. From Spring is the beginning of a new life for Michigan fishermen. The streams are flowing, the days are getting longer, and most species of fish are preparing to spawn. It's those pre-spawning runs when the fish go on the feed, and for some species, they're easy to catch in the shallows when they're defending their beds. Now, steelhead in the spring are a popular quarry, either from a boat or wading. Of 56 steelhead trophies reported to the DNR's Master Angler Program in 1985, only six were caught in April and only eight in May. The Osaba River and the Platte River reported most of these big stream fish, but Lake Michigan accounted for nearly all the rest taken by salmon fishermen during the summer. 44 in all on spoons and plugs. July was the best month with 21 registered. Now suckers are another popular stream fish at this time of year. They sometimes hit the spawn used by steelhead fishermen, but most spring suckers are caught on worms or crawlers. April is when half of the master angler white suckers are caught. The biggest last year was four pounds, 13 ounces from Van Etten Lake. So steelhead and suckers, two species that are available in April, and both are very popular. Now in the Great Lakes though, it's brown trout, coho, and chinook. April and May, the action can be hot. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Oh, look at this back here, OJ. We got three fish on. Uh, who's gonna hold the microphone? You hold the microphone, Pete? I don't know how we do this. What do you mean everything's all screwed up here? We're catching fish and having fun, aren't we? There's a fish right here. Right here. Carl, this is yours. We have four salmon on at once. And Bob Garner has finally got the net free. There's, there's one aboard, and we got three more on right now. Oh, we got another one. This is five in a row. Huh? Action like this is often found in the spring. The fish are bunched up in the shallows. They're hungry and they're aggressive. Most salmon are on the small side, but every now and then one that approaches master angler size is landed. Oh, it's a king, it's a king. Look at this one, OJ, look at that one. Lift, 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 lift Joanne. Lift him. Last year, one 30-pound Chinook was caught in April, and that, surprisingly oh, yeah, enough, was off. off the thumb. The rest were spread out from July to October. Manistee was the top port with three 30-pounders. <laughs> now, brown trout are another popular spring trophy in the Great Lakes. 15 reported last year, over 16 pounds. Grand Traverse Bay and Alpena were the top areas for brown trout, accounting for half of the trophies. Salmon hit J-plugs and spoons, but the big browns went for rapalas and rebels. First week in May was an exceptional week for browns. Now walleye over nine pounds were reported all season long, but late April always sees a flurry in the St. Clair River. The top three areas throughout the year in order are the St. Clair River, the Osabo River, and Manistee Lake. That's where the largest was caught, nearly 13 pounds. Nighttime is the best time for the big ones. Pencil plugs, rapalas, night crawlers are the favorite baits. June was the biggest month, by the way, with 21 trophies reported, over nine pounds. Now, 31 northern pike, over 18 pounds, were taken from Michigan waters last year. Three of them on opening day, that's May 15th. Now, one area in the UP reported seven master angler northerns. That's the Dead River Basin. And most trophy pike were caught on either spinners, daredevil type spoons, or minnows. Now, pike can be caught just about everywhere in Michigan. They like shallow, weedy areas, so fish along weed beds any time of the year and you'll find them. The big cousin of the pike is the muskie. Of the three species we have in this state, the most commonly caught variety is the Great Lakes muskie. 
Master Angler minimum for muskie is 20 pounds. State record is 62 and a half pounds. And last year, we were on hand when Nick Nichols came in with what turned out to be the largest hook and line catch of 1985. On the tail, this is a 47 and three quarter pound Great Lakes muskie that was taken on May what 16th? 16th, yes, last okay. Thursday, and it's uh, 56 inches long. Well, go ahead, try, try to pick this up. I think we we got a pair of gloves on it here. Oh, there it is. This is very, very rarely do we do we have a fish on the show that it takes two people to hold, but this is definitely a case. What's the story, Nick? What kind of day was it? Tell me about this bat. Well, it was a windy, cloudy day, which is considered one of the best for musky fishing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess uh, when I pulled this up under the boat, I thought maybe I had a small submarine on there. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> What and time of day was it? Most muskies. About 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, most muskies are caught. Our trophy book data analyzing that shows us that between 10.30 and 11.30 in the morning yeah. in May and June of last year, uh, most of the muskies were caught. So maybe I should afternoon. have been out earlier, right? Oh, early <laughs> afternoon. I think, I think you did fine. <laughs> okay. Who are you fishing with? Myself. I was all alone. Well, Nick will have his story at the Fishing Awards Banquet on April 5th, along with that mounted trophy. That's a northern Michigan muskie. More muskie, by the way, are caught on believers than any other lure, and over half of them from Lake St. Clair. For Perch, though, it's Saginaw Bay. First one. Oh, look at this. It's going to be big, too. You think so? Yeah. It's look at that. <laughs> look how it's pulling. The first one. A double header. Oh, Whoa. Oh, last one. Last one. <laughs> No. Double headers are common when the perch fishing is hot, which can be almost any time of the year in Saginaw Bay. Over 12 million perch are caught by sport fishermen in Saginaw Bay, but you know, the big ones don't seem to come from there. Our trophy book data shows that the two pound variety come from Little Bay to Knock early in the year, but later in the summer, one lake in the UP reported 24 master angler perch, none other than Lake Gogibic, obviously famous for its perch and walleye. Now, channel catfish are another popular fish that doesn't seem to get much attention in the magazines, but they're caught in Saginaw Bay, in fact, all over the state. 48 channel cats, over 8 pounds, were taken last year. July and September were the big months. Manistee Lake, Lake St. Clair, Holloway Reservoir reported the most, and crawlers and minnows were the favorite bait. Live bait takes the perch. Also, minnows are usually thought of as the ideal perch bait. 16 of the 57 master angler perch hit minnows, but 18 were caught on night crawlers. That catches another popular panfish, the bluegill. They almost hit exclusively on worms and crawlers. 34 bluegill reported last year over a pound. June was the best month, the best lake. Lake Mitchell in Wexford County reported three over a pound. The biggest came from Wixom Lake in Gladwin County. Now, a lot of people don't realize that the bluegill's big cousins are the largemouth and smallmouth bass. 57 largemouth, over six pounds, made the trophy book. They were caught on plastic worms, spinner baits, and night crawlers for the most part. Eight of them were taken the last week in May, that's spawning time, but you know, eight were also caught during one week in mid-August. So the bass fishing keeps up all through the summer. And, you know, and the UP reports its share of trophy largemouths too. Smallmouths are widely dispersed all over the state, but Lakes Cadillac and Mitchell reported three. That's 10% of 1985's trophy smallmouths. The summer looks like a good one for trophy fish. The next couple weeks looks good for fishermen. Our Fishing Awards Banquet on April 5th in Livonia and our Fishing Workshop on April 12th in Okemos. Get ready for the season because we have an entire season of fishing coming up in Michigan outdoors. Good luck. Now that the license package has passed, it will mean some moderate increases for hunting and fishing licenses for residents and non-residents who hunt in Michigan. To explain these increases, I talked to Dennis Adams, chief of the DNR's budget division. This year for hunters and fishermen in this state, are they gonna see any increases? Yes, there will be a, a elimination of the free resident spouse fishing license. There will be a $3 uh, application and handling charge for Hunter's Choice uh, deer permits, and there will be a dollar charge on passbooks. Okay, that's, that's this year, that the, those kind of, well, hidden charges, we might say, not direct license increases. 1987. 1987, that's when the across the board uh, resident fee increases will go into effect. The non-resident fee increases go into effect this year. Are the non-resident fees going to be much higher? 
Well, we don't think so, but we think that the increases are appropriate in uh, view of uh, inflation and so forth. For instance, the uh, non-resident fire and deer license will go up from $75 to $100. And the, then in 1987, resident fee increases uh, will be uh, a, a roughly a couple of dollars each license? That's right. Your small game license, the fishing license, and the trout stamp will go up from 725 to 985 The uh, firearm deer and, and uh, archery deer license will, will go up from 975 to 1285 But again, that's not till next, not this season. April 1987, exactly, right. The Southern Michigan Deer Hunt handgun deer hunt regulations are final are finally uh, put forth on paper. That comes as a direct order from Ron Skoog, and here they are. Only 35 caliber or larger repeating handguns will be allowed. Straight wall cartridges only. Nine shot maximum capacities. Hunters born after December 31st, 1959, must have in their possession while hunting during the deer season a hunter safety certificate and all black powder calibers must be 44 caliber or larger. By the way, only round balls will be legal in muzzle loaders. There is some good news in the outdoors. Winter is breaking up. As a matter of fact, uh, all through the North Country, deer are on the move. They're finally able to get out of the yards and at least think about migrating towards their summer range if it's not near the yarding areas. How deer know the ice is safe? Now, I don't know. But you'd think with their small hooves and uh, all their weight on just a few square inches, they'd fall through at this time of year. They probably do now and then. But if a deer has the strength to be out on the ice, it will have enough strength to swim. Strength is a real problem at this time of, of year and especially this year. The winter has been hard. The severity index, which is a combination of snowfall and temperature, has been really high. The winter drew a lot of energy from the deer herd, which means they have to eat more food than normal to stay healthy and in many cases to stay alive. This little doe we came across a week ago near Clare, it's one of a number of deer we saw dying or dead, and today that number is much higher. There's nothing that could be done to save her or to save any of the deer in this condition. They've drawn every bit of fat from their bodies, including the fat from their bone marrow, which is an irreversible process. These deer have all been competing for food, and unfortunately, when there's not enough winter food to go around, every animal suffers and many die. The losses this year will be much greater than in the past four or five years, and that's a sad close to winter in the outdoors. In this week's Outdoor Reminder, remember that your fishing licenses expire Monday, March 31st. You know, about looking over the trophy data, reading the articles, you know, we draw in the digest here, we draw a lot of conclusions about fish. And there's one thing that I've answered <laughs> over the years about suspended fish. Now, suspended fish are ones that are not on the bottom, they're not on the surface, they're somewhere in between. And I've said in the past that the fish are finding a water temperature they're comfortable at. Right, right. But Dan Knezik <laughs> for East Lansing set me straight on this. Listen to this letter, it's a great one. He says, while watching your show, I was surprised to find that you answered a question incorrectly. When answering the question about suspended bass, you said that the fish were there because it was more comfortable for them. This is simply not true. Fish don't favor one water temperature over another. If they did, all the fish in a lake would be in one place. Since fish are cold-blooded, they are really comfortable all of the time. The different depths at which bass are found is never determined by the water temperatures at those levels. It is determined by a combination of other conditions like light penetration, water oxygen, and water stratification where present. What water temperature does influence is the metabolism of the bass. Therefore, water temperature should be used to determine the lure presentation, the warmer, the faster, that will be most effective. Please clear this up for the misled anglers. You know, he's absolutely correct. They're cold-blooded. So when we catch them in the winter and they're on the bottom in 33-degree water, they're not any more uncomfortable or comfortable than they are when it's 70. Oh, absolutely not. I never thought about that. That's, that's a liberal use of the word comfort, comfortable, I think we've taken, but uh, he's right. No, I think he's right. It is other factors. The water temperature can, can be an indication, but heck, never thought about that. Good point. You, you, you have a good one here, Bob, sure. I think. Uh, for you, uh, Fred from Craig Isley of Gaylord, he writes, he says, if you're hunting and you get trapped by a bear or some other deadly animal that you need a permit to hunt, can you shoot it or not? 
Well, you know, that's a tough one. We have an article in this digest called Black Bear, Fearsome Attacker or Gentle Ben. Now, uh -huh. this article explains that grizzly bears oftentimes attack just to, uh, I don't know, just because they're mad, and, and if you play dead, they go away. Now, black bears, this article says don't play dead, because if they attack a person, oftentimes it's out of predation to eat them. Uh -huh. But I, this doesn't happen very often. I would say that, that you could not shoot an animal out of season because they very rarely, if ever... Well, I'll tell you what, if a wild, a wild animal has me trapped, I will shoot it. And I think it will be very legal, or I know it will be legal, if I can prove to the conservation officers, report it to police, the COs, uh, and tell them, uh, you know, exactly what the circumstances were and be able to prove it. Yeah, but that's going to have to be something like a bear would just about be it, wouldn't it? I mean, a small animal, a fox, he, Well, you have a close encounter be. with a badger. I yeah, with that. a badger, but, you know, you can back those animals down. I'd sure. say it'd be pretty darn tough to prove. I, yeah, right. But I'd, I'd make sure uh, make sure I could prove it before uh, before I shot. My life's in danger. If you have to your life is in danger, boy, that's that's a tough. One. Not likely to happen in Michigan. By the way, you're going to forfeit the uh, the animal too if you do do it in self defense. Yeah. So don't think you're going to go home right. with a trophy or a rug or anything like that. Wow. Good questions from your viewers. Stump Bob and Fred Day. <laughs> now let's see if you can answer this question in our outdoor quiz. What's the largest coho salmon ever caught in the United States, and where was it taken? Paul Lewandowski landed a monster 30-pound, 9-ounce coho while fishing Michigan's Platte River in 1976. Roger McCarville, yes. just the man I've been waiting to meet, and our audience, too. You notice right away a lot of people are out there going to say, well, he's in a wheelchair. Right. Does that mean you're handicapped? Uh, to some things, not to uh, to a, a lot of other things. I, you know, depending on what you're calling handicap, I do things somewhat different than uh, you might run around mm -hmm. on your legs, but I still do them. Now you you have fished and you have hunted, right? Fishing, hunting, uh, uh, using the outdoors, camping. Uh, there's so many things that we do. We do kayaking. Uh, uh, water skiing, mm -hmm. uh, sit skiing, and the snow slopes. Uh. Well, you know, these competitive sports are what I've heard a lot about and, and gets publicity, especially uh, the Special Olympics. Right. But there's a concern that I have, which is why I asked you to come down here today, uh, is with handicapped people who hunt and fish or who can't hunt and fish anymore. I have been barraged with letters over the years by people saying, can't you get a crossbow season for for my uncle or somebody who has arthritis and can't pull a bow back anymore? Uh, can you get special regulations passed for this? Uh, do you know of any places where we can go fishing and charter boat captains will take us out? Um, people have called and asked about sponsoring an event for handicappers. And I don't know where to turn to. We make some calls here and there and nobody seems to know. And another thing is that a lot of the handicapper groups seem to revolve around a particular disability, mm -hmm. I guess you call it, you know, whether it's blindness or uh, cystic fibrosis or cerebral palsy. Right. Between, right. And I've been looking to put together something that would be for sportsmen, hunters and fishermen to help them be represented. Right. What do you think, Rod? You're, you're on, I, first of all, you're on the Governor's Recreation Commission. Right. I was appointed by Governor Blanchard's State Recreation Advisory Committee. And what we try to do in an overall uh, picture is uh, recommend uh, to the governor, the legislature, and to the DNR, services are needed by the population of Michigan, all of the population. And my particular interest is from coming from the handicap standpoint. Right now, we don't have anything. We're all splintered. Mm -hmm. And being splintered, it's hard for us to tell you. What I need is a, I'm an amputee. I can get up and walk. I can't walk long and far. So I have different needs than a quadriplegic mm -hmm. or a paraplegic. And if I have somebody that has a mental handicap, they need different things that I need. Somebody that's elderly, it's got arthritis and different things. We all have different uh, needs, but we all need recreation. Mm -hmm. We all need hunting. We all need fishing. And I think, you know, later on I could maybe get into it, but we do all that. And I think if you can get down to where you can do it from a wheelchair, next to that, I don't know what would be the hardest thing to do. But we do hunting, fishing, archery. Uh, a lot of the shooting sports. All the shooting sports, but they do camping, trail, hiking, but, see, I haven't, riding. I haven't known about this, and some of the special regulations I've talked to, well, Kerry Cameron, talked to Jerry Bartnick, and among us, we don't know how to even present these things. And I can't 
you know, just ask people to come on the show and put out a notice. If anybody's handicapped and you got a deer this year, yeah. you know, that sounds kind of crass. Right. But I would like to have the handicappers represented because I understand there are quite a few. Yeah, I would say there's, in, in Michigan, we got over a million and a half handicapped and seniors, counting all mm -hmm. disabilities. Well, a lot of seniors become somewhat handicapped with arthritis and things right. like that, which is, frankly, all of us face as sportsmen. Mm -hmm. We look at a future where we may not be able to participate in archery or bow hunting, and it would be nice to have a mechanism to get some special right. regulations so through. All these adapted programs in the state of Michigan, Central Michigan, uh, Eastern Michigan, Wayne State University graduate every year recreation therapists, and they're trained mm -hmm. to teach us how to uh, go out and, and use adapted equipment now to hunt and fish and do these things. Here's my idea. April 12th at our fishing workshop, I'm pulling together a meeting of people from a, hopefully a lot of organizations, plus just sportsmen out there. If you know someone who's handicapped or you are handicapped or have someone in your family, come to this meeting April 12th at Okemos High School with our fishing workshop. And I just would like to see some sort of association spring out of that where some oh, people come and, and say, hey, we'll, we'll grab a, a handicapped or sportsman's organization. I don't even know what to call it. That sounds good. Sound like a good idea to yeah. you? I would think that would be fantastic. You'll be there. I'll be there. Representing the Governor's Commission. I know we're going to have representatives from the legislature, the DNR, and hopefully a lot of sportsmen will be out. I'll but be there. I, I'm on the right track. You're on the right track. We need it. Roger, thank you very much. Thank we'll be you. talking with Roger more about this and and this meeting is folded into our fishing workshop which is one of the events coming up right now on our outdoor calendar the bear marquette chapter of the michigan wild turkey federation is holding its annual wild turkey festival this saturday at baldwin high school in baldwin hunter safety courses aren't only for the kids adults are invited to participate in these courses too there's one this saturday and sunday at the point mulier shooting range the royal oak archers are sponsoring a wednesday league beginning april 2nd at lake orion the league is scheduled to run through may 21st april 5th and 6th bob's gun and tackle shop will present a turkey hunters extravaganza with plenty of turkey calling and hunting tips and that'll be at hastings this is your last chance to join us for the store's fishing awards banquet april 5th at Romans of Livonia. Ticket sales will be cut off March 29th. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Some of the biggest fish taken in Michigan in 1985 will be there, and it should be quite a night. Fred Tro's fishing workshop is slated for April 12th at Okemos High School. Featured at the workshop will be presentations in fish senses, what a fish can see, smell, hear, and taste, along with demonstrations of fly casting, lure use, and live bait techniques. Handicapped sportsmen and handicapped organizations now take a special note. The first meeting of interested handicapped sportsmen takes place at the fishing workshop. We want to invite all handicappers who hunt or fish who are, or who are interested in hunting, fishing, or the shooting sports. Again, these events occur Saturday, April 12th at Okemos High School. Don't forget our outdoor fair, June 26th through the 29th, that's a Friday through Sunday, and that's at Houghton Lake. Members of the Flint Bowman have pledged that the archery exhibits and shoots will be bigger and better than ever. If you missed a number on the outdoor calendar, you can get it by calling the Michigan Travel Bureau toll-free at 1-800-292-2520. And that's a look at upcoming events on the Michigan Outdoors calendar. This looks kind of chalky here, Kathy, but it's uh, because this has been poached. Right. Not boiled, poached. And we have a little controversy going. Now, this piece of fish right here was poached in water. And some lemon slices. Um, lemon, right. And then this was poached in milk. Milk and a little bit of butter. Uh, poaching, uh, well, I'm mentioning about the controversy. Bob <laughs> and I have a disagreement as to already? which tastes better. Yeah, we have a disagreement already. But poaching is about the simplest recipe That's in the right. world. A little bit easier than boiling. Okay, you got water, salt and pepper, and lemon slices for the liquid. That's all you do is put it in a liquid. That's what poaching is. And it, you're going to simmer it instead of let it come to a full rolling boil. This way you want to trim all the dark. All the lateral, lateral line. Because that's, right. that's the, the it's sort of mushy flesh uh -huh. and it's strong taste. That's where you get a strong taste in fish. And put this in a pan. Add just about a cup of water. Just enough to cover your fish. You don't want to completely drown it. Just to the top there. A few lemon slices and some salt and pepper. Now there you could add just about anything you wanted to, to your water. Any well, kind of seasoning. Yeah, this is the most basic That's of right. all poaching. And poaching in this case seems to refer more to the fact that it's gently boiled. It's simmering, just right. Just simmering in there. Because it's going to simmer for about 8 to 10 minutes. And here it is. This has just been simmered. Not 
totally boiled fish. There's no salt added. None. Well, just a little bit, just for flavoring. Just now, here's, here's the kind of flavoring I like. I'll put a little, <laughs> little bit of this on here. Melted butter, maybe with a little melted lemon in it. I got some. You have some on there? Oh, yeah. you, you want a little, another dash. Now, Bob, the milk or the lemon water mixture? Well, as I, I thought the milk, but the, the more I got into the lemon water mixture and got on the inside of that filet, it's the lemon water mixture, definitely. You can taste oh, that lemon just like a little bit. We converted it. <laughs> yeah, because well, it's moisture, too, as you get into the inside of it, mm -hmm. rather than drying out. The milk is supposed to take out uh, any type of you fishy flavor. You can soak the fish in uh -huh. milk, and it'll take it out. Yeah, but you know, but I think the lemon does a lot better job. Oh, I do, too. I agree. I Absolutely. Think this, the lemon is a lot tastier, so that's our vote. <laughs> Although with poaching, you can use, you're supposed to use what's called a court bouillon. Right. You can use and white wine and a variety of Any kind of, of liquid things. that you like. And remember, poaching, we took these fish legally. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> Does not reflect the manner of taking. <laughs> Only method of cooking. But poaching, we have a little uh, rundown on methods of poaching. And Bob, where can our viewers get a copy? A really tasty recipe for poached salmon. It could be used with other fish, too. It's in this issue of Fred Trost's Outdoor Digest, along with articles on hunting and fishing and last year's Master Angler data for March and April. For a free copy, write to us here at Fred Trost's Outdoor Digest, P.O. Box 6001, East Lansing, Michigan, 48823. <laughs> We have a great summer ahead in Michigan Outdoors, but we also have a great month coming up. Now, the PBS auctions will be occurring around the state on various stations, which may juggle the broadcast schedules of Michigan Outdoors various times during the next couple of weeks. So make sure you check your program guides and know when Michigan Outdoors is going to be seen in your area. I want to remind you also of our Fishing Awards Banquet, April 5th. We're right down to the line on tickets, so if you want tickets to the banquet to see all the big fish and here are the big fish stories of 1985 make sure you call right away and don't forget our fishing workshop on april 12th in okamas this is going to be a good one and please i want to make an appeal here to handicappers people who know handicapped sportsmen or represent an organization that deals with the handicapped come to our workshop on april 12th call us if you want more information because we're having a special meeting to see what we can do to bring some attention uh, to the Handicapped Sportsman of Michigan. So a lot coming up. Enjoy yourself, and we'll see you next week.